Hey guys, coming at you in real time. It's Thursday afternoon. I just got off a team call and I had said to her right before I hung up the phone or right before we got off Zoom because everything's virtual now <laughs> that I owed her a podcast. And a lot of times I get stuck on like, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? What am I going to say? And the truth is I have so much to say, but I just don't ever know what's going to come out of my mouth until I hit record. So this is me just showing up. I'm not really sure what you're going to get out of this, but I'm just going to go with it and speak what's on my mind. And so the two things that come to mind and that we actually discussed in the team call is pivoting, pivoting when things are no longer working. And so I was explaining to her how I kind of changed my hours and kind of changed how I'm going to be working from here on out because I honestly thought that things were going to go back to normal much sooner, but it turns out that things might be like this for a little bit longer than we had anticipated. And so the schedule that I had had for myself was based on a previous schedule before COVID. And I was like, whatever, I'm just going to keep this schedule for a little bit because it's temporary and things will go back to normal. And then that way I don't have to switch things around too much, but it's been over a month and I find that I have been increasingly stressed and like running out of time and not managing my time as well. Um, obviously still getting in my morning routine because that kind of keeps me on track for everything throughout my day or like energetically wise, like I, I, I just feel better. And the days that I have skipped my morning routine, I am a freaking bear. But so I'm like, oh, I really don't want to work till five or six o'clock at night. Why am I doing this to myself? I'm a morning person. I should be doing things in the morning. But before I would, you know, drop kids off at daycare, do some work, pick them up. And and things were just a little bit different. So I, and it takes, it takes, I don't even know how I'm going to say this. Sometimes it takes somebody else to say, Hey, if this isn't working, why do you keep doing it? And so I have to ask myself that, because I don't always have somebody to call me out on my bullshit. I mean, I do, but like I, I have enough self-awareness to where I can kind of call myself out now. And so I'm, I'm looking at my life and I'm like, hmm, this isn't working. This isn't working. This isn't working. How can I pivot? How can I pivot? Well, duh, Sasha, just change your hours that feel more in alignment with where you're at right now with the kids, with the house, with these new projects that you have going on. You can't just work 24 seven because I, you guys, I've told you this before at heart, I'm a workaholic. Like I love nothing more than just like helping people and like doing things, but I have to like stop and recharge my battery. I have to like hang out with my kids. I have to hang out with my family, like other things that bring me joy so that I can keep that momentum going. Going. So the takeaway for part one of this is if it's not working, ask yourself what specifically isn't working. And sometimes it's as simple as just rearranging your schedule that feels better to you because when you can show up as your best self, everybody else gets a better version of you. So if you want to be, if you're working from home and you're like, man, I don't want to work a nine to five anymore. Don't. <laughs> My suggestion is change your hours that work for you. Maybe you work six to two. Maybe you work seven to three. Maybe you split your day and you work part in the morning and part in the night. Do whatever feels good to you. This is me giving you permission to modify how that looks in your life. And if you're still reporting to a boss, say to them like, hey, can I change things up? Because I feel like I will be happier. I'll be more productive. I'll get more things done. Um, the ROI is going to be huge if you can do things that work for you a little bit better. So this is me giving you permission to look at your calendar, look at your schedule, figure out what's working and what's not working, and then course correct from there. And then the second thing that I want to leave you with real quick, and that is we talked about sales. She was talking about how there's a guy in town that just like posts the same thing over and over and over and over. And it's, and I, I don't know who this guy is, but I think, I think that a lot of us get grossed out by that, that sales where it's just like, buy here, 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 buy here. And yes, people generally need to see things, you know, a half a dozen or a dozen times before they will actually purchase. But if you are in business, just 
be mindful that you're actually giving value. Okay. So like teaching and educating people on what your product is, what your service is and how it's going to benefit them. And so one of the analogies that I shared with her, I said, well, I wish more people would understand this. You know, you don't just like go balls to the wall asking somebody for their hand in marriage on the first day that you met them. No, you have that friendly interaction. You kind of flirt a little bit, you become friendly, and then you ask for a date, and then you ask for a second date, and then you start dating, and then you ask for the relationship, right? It's like nurturing that relationship. It's not just like jumping in and saying, all right, we're going to go with this, and you're going to do this, and you're going to do that. That does not work anymore. So think of how you can kind of like build that know, like, and trust by focusing on the value that you are giving to your followers, to your clients, to your prospects, however that looks for you, okay? So this is just a real quick podcast. I gotta go. My son woke up. He's not happy. So I'm gonna go grab him quick, and then I'm gonna be coming at you guys tomorrow with another kick-ass interview. You are gonna love it. We're gonna do two interviews a week from here on out. Uh, to the end of May. So Wednesdays and Fridays, tune in for sure for interviews on kick-ass women who are doing amazing things in the world. You're going to be, oh, you're going to be so blown away. So anyways, have a kick-ass Friday. As always, message me on Instagram if you need anything. I am here for you, Sasha.Davis, and I'll catch you all tomorrow.